in viewing people in contemporary, say, American society, would you say that the great majority of people, therefore, are non-productive rather than productive? I'm case? afraid that is so, that productive people today are the exception. Uh, uh, and that doesn't mean that the majority of people are not, are, are not artists and writers or scientists or anything like that. In fact, uh, what it means only is that they are not authentic, that what they feel, what they think, what they do is not the result of an activity in them but of <coughs> something they are told, but told not even usually directly but by implication, by signals. We obey today by signals. While a hundred years ago, we obeyed because we were told that's what you have to do, and if you don't, you will see what happens. This was a much cruder, but in fact a much healthier method. But in a way, in a subtle way, it's the same thing again. Yes, it's worse, because how can I protest, how can I know that this I want and this I don't want, if I'm never told I have to do this? I prefer to be told, then I know that I obey, rather than to get signals which operate in a subliminal or indirect or unconscious way. Mm -hmm. like in an animal experiment. I would say this, very briefly, man is a freak of nature because at the same time he is an animal and at the same time is the only case of life having awareness of himself. This in itself, this situation of having awareness of himself and yet being in the body of an animal would create a tremendous sense of separateness and fright. Therefore, man has to look for some union, and he can do it in two ways. He can either regress or he can progress. By regress, I mean he can try to be an animal again to do away with awareness and reason, or he can try to develop his human powers to such an extent that he finds new unity. Well, this is only a very brief statement, but I want to elaborate with regard to this point. Now, the person who cannot live productively, who cannot create at all, nevertheless does not want to be a passive person, like dice thrown out of a cup. He wants to transcend. Now, one way is to create, and here become have the productive person. Create in some way, even if it is something I do with my hands, a simple thing. But if I cannot create, I transcend my creature status also if I destroy. Mm -hmm. To destroy life is as much of a transcendence of life as to create it. Mm. To create requires conditions of interest, of capacity, many conditions. To destroy requires only one thing, a pistol or a strong arm, if your opponent is weaker. But in the process of destruction, I also fulfill the desire to transcend life, uh, to transcend my passive creature status, and I triumph over life. It is my vengeance, you might say, my vengeance against life for not permitting me to be oriented to it productively. And therefore I think destructiveness is one of the deepest forms of mental pathology. Uh, as far as there is authoritarianism today, in the overt sense, I think masochistic and sadistic elements are in it, just as I try to describe them. But I think authoritarianism is, ye overt authoritarianism, is yielding to covert authoritarianism today, namely to the manipulation of men by signals. The authoritarian uh, pattern of escape is gradually diminishing into the uh, automaton pattern. That That's, right. About. That's right. That's right. I want to be very clear, I think this uh, development is not only likely in the Soviet Union, I'm afraid it's also happening here. Um, in other words, that here too, in our industrial bureaucracy, while we pay lip service to individuality, to uh, private inter enterprise, private and individual initiative and so on, we also get more and more into a bureaucratically organized uh, society in which really the average person is the organization man. That is to say, the man who has escaped into automaton conformity. Yeah. As you look at this overall um, problem of defining the, the struggle that man has between independence and dependence, which comes throughout your work, uh, do you think that there is any basis for saying that man is, is uh, moving away from 
independence to a great degree of the... I'm afraid thing. so, yes. I'm afraid so that we are in a peculiar fix. We are proud of the achievement of the 19th century, which was the achievement of the independent individualistic man. And while we are still being proud of it, we have moved into it, I think here and in the, uh, in the Soviet Union, into a more and more bureaucratic system in which with the illusion of independence, man becomes more and more little cog in the machine, little organization man. And I think the future of our civilization depends on the question whether we in the West, and I would hope this would be possible in the East too, can redress and can change this tendency and can return to individualism and humanism, uh, which we still pay lip service to, but which we are losing, and I'm afraid fast, as a human reality.